Hey, Miles here at Tactical Hive, and today I'm joined with Rostin Ristoff, the Director of Training at Tactical Performance Center. And uh, in this video, we're going to dive into and explore the principles of kinesthetic efficiency. And what really is that? So kinesthetic in the sense that anything that we do, any physical action that we take, and how to make it more efficient. And I'm here with Rostin today because the T TPC and Rostin have really boiled down how to break down movements and actions into specific principles that really will make you more effective and efficient and for a lot of people who are into competition for example they'll see the real huge benefit in this because competition shooters for example are trying to cut down as much time as possible make their their movements no waste of movement super efficient but not only is it great for competition shooters, this is, this is, I would argue, is so much more important for the defensive shooter because if you can cut time anywhere, I would argue that a split second is more important in real life than it is in competition. So we're taking techniques, many people might think that are only for competition, but are really great for everything else. So without further ado, I'm going to pass over everything to Ross. So yeah, as we said, it's uh, even more important for a real situation and for defensive shooting because consequences will be different and you can we can pay with your life let's say right again when we're talking about a weapon manipulation we put the tactics aside for a little bit when you're talking about the pure marksmanship skills weapon manipulation of course it's very important in a in a defensive uh, situation or any kind of a, of, a, of a combat skill development you're more efficient you're faster you will dominate in, in a situation. Especially for self-defense, the two biggest factors when you focus on marksmanship in a self-defense situation, that's accuracy and speed. We are reacting on the stimulus. Uh, most of the time, the bad guy will be already ahead. So we are one step behind. The only way actually to preserve our lives or somebody else's life it's uh, to dominate by speed, by speed, but at the same time to be able to preserve that accuracy. Again, we're talking about the marksmanship aspect of our combat skills here. Now, the principles of kinesthetic efficiency is a simple list of five principles, and you can use them like a checklist. Regardless of what kind of weapon manipulation or any kind of action, regarding the, the firearms and firearm shooting, you can check box and see if your manipulations or if your actions are efficient enough or is there some room to improve them. So the five principles that we'll discuss are consolidated action, economy of motion, management of momentum, sufficient effort and elimination of hesitation. Now, what we're going to do, we'll break each one of them and we'll give you live examples in order to, the, to understand them better. So we'll start with the first principle and the first principle, it's consolidated action. What does it mean? While you're doing something, when you're performing some kind of action with the firearm or with your body, is there something else that you can do meanwhile? And what we'll do, we'll demonstrate a multiple applications of that principle. Let's take the draw, the pistol draw, like a first example. So if you don't mind, can you face towards the targets and we will demo and meanwhile we'll talk about it. Okay, let's uh, throw a few demonstrations here and explain meanwhile. Let's say we will start with the draw, when you're drawing a gun. Uh, let's do it really slowly. The first step is at the moment that you reach the gun with your shooting hand, what the support hand will do? It will go to the index position in order to meet together and form a two-handed grip. So basically what you're doing, you're using the time when you're reaching the gun to position your support hand where it's supposed to be in that index position. Then when you draw, draw the gun, connect both hands. Now, from here, you're presenting the gun towards the target, but meanwhile, you're forming the proper pressure, you're maximizing that pressure, you're adding the biomechanical efficiency, and at the moment that you're presenting the gun, you touch, prep the trigger, so at the moment that you arrive at the acceptable margin of error, your desired target, you already prepared everything 
Now you look through the sides to see acceptable side picture. And if you already have a decision to break that shot, you'll break that shot without hesitation. Makes sense? So you see that you're doing several things in a parallel way in order to shorten the time of that execution. All right, now let's, uh, let's do it real time. Okay. And again, focus to do these things simultaneously in order to cut the time. You dedicated already that you were going to engage the target. So, as we said, speed and accuracy. Ready, stand by, up. That was a perfect miss. <laughs> Let's do it again. All right, ready, stand by, up. All right, so we'll do it one more time. Now watch the hands, the hands start to move together when you're drawing the gun. Are you ready? Stand by, up. Good. And reholster. Now, let's take a second example when you're talking about consolidated action. We'll take an example right now, transition from target to target or multiple target engagements. You engage the target. You need to engage a secondary target as fast as you can. We said that we already assessed, we already took the decision to engage these targets. Now, when you're making that transition from a target to a target, the gun will be still in recoil while you start moving to the next target. If you want really to gain speed. What else we can do meanwhile? What about resetting and prepping the trigger so you arrive on the next target with the trigger already prepped? So you don't need to feel rushed. You limit or minimize the anxiety and you increase the precision of your action. So let's do it slowly first. We'll do it live fire. Present the gun on target. Prep the trigger. Break the shot, and as soon as you break that shot, slowly, but I want to start moving towards the next target. At the same time, reset and prep the trigger, so when you arrive on the next target, the trigger will be already prepped, so the slack will be taken. Do it really slow. Okay. Let's go. Reset, prep. The trigger is uh, prepared. Mm -hmm. Your sights are aligned, right? Yeah. So you're ready for that next shot. Basically, you feel prepared. You're ahead of the situation. Now let's do it real time. Okay. Go. It's the second shot. <laughs> let's do it again. So time. pay attention about your sights. Shift your focus back towards your sights and go. Now, as you can see right now, we are very, very fast and efficient with pure technical mechanical transition and multiple target engagements. Right? Unload your clear. Now let's have another example. Let's say just an emergency reload. So you fired several shots, your gun went dry, you need the next magazine as soon as possible. So at the moment that you reach the next magazine, what else you can do? Reaching for the Releasing the old magazine, and at the same time, you will approach a fresh magazine at the same time. So again, example of efficiency and application of the principle of consolidated action, right? Let's do that uh, real-time live fire. You put one magazine with several rounds, shoot it until you get dry, and let's perform a fast or emergency reload. So, Miles, let's do first an example that it's uh, more applicable in a competitive environment. We'll do a, a speed reload without gun get empty. Actually, you will have still rounds in the uh, old magazine, but in order to avoid longer period of time, you'll plan. In, in a competition, you have the ability to plan your reload, actually to make it even faster. And then I will demonstrate a emergency reload in an actual situation where the gun is going dry and you need to 
perform a emergency or fast magazine change. A minor differences, but you see the application of the same principle here, cons consolidated actions. So go ahead, hold, make ready, and go. All right, as you can see, and you pay attention, at the moment that he's releasing the empty magazine, at the same time, the other hand is moving already towards the fresh magazine in order to save time. Now I'll do a short demo with uh, emergency reload when the slide is locked back. So we can have one more example. Again, in a competitive world, that's uh, one of the very important factors in order to cut the time. It's uh, when you're arriving to the position and you're smoothing yourself, you're gliding into the position. Meanwhile, though, what else you can do? You can extend and present the gun towards the target. You can apply the proper grip and all the biomechanical efficiency on the grip. And you'll be absolutely ready to engage the target as soon as you see your proper sight alignment and that the sight picture is stable enough. It's not necessary to be completely static. At the moment, as soon as it's, as it's stable enough, you can break that for a shot. So let's do a live fire demonstration about it. Now do it again, but be stable, be flat footed. Yeah, They'll do that uh, dying swan technique there. That. The dying swan. <laughs> <laughs> Flat footed. <clears throat> Good. So that was the principle of consolidated action. In simple words, that means can you do something else meanwhile you're performing an action? The second principle, economy of motion. That simply means less movement, more speed. What we need to involve in a certain process in order to keep it efficient, but it will be good enough only to accomplish that task. We can take the example, just a simple draw, right? Instead of Adding additional motions will focus to move only the arms, only the arms. That means you already took the shooting position. The only thing that you need to do is to move your arms. Let's do it several times slowly. What I'll do, I'll put my hands on your shoulders and that will be kind of a checkpoint here that you'll move only the arms. Let's go. All right. Reholster again. Let's do it one more time, gradually to increase the speed, and go. All right, now let's hold make ready. We'll do it live fire, full speed. Now, the focus here is to engage only the muscles that are necessary to be engaged and only the parts of your body that needs to be active. You move only them. Are you ready? Stand by, go. Perfect mic. Let's do it again. Focus exactly where you want to hit. Look there and burn that like a laser. Let's do it real time, real speed. Are you ready? Stand by, up. Only arms are moving. Now, one more time, by your own. Same thing, let's push the speed up. Ready, stand by, up. One more time. Are you ready? Real speed, push the speed up. Only arms are moving. Stand by, up. Very good, and reholster. That was the principle of economy of motion. Less movement, more speed. All right, it's time for principle number three, and that's uh, management of momentum. We actually already presented that principle in a different way, when you talk about a pistol draw before in some of our previous videos. And we're going to demonstrate it one more time with the draw. We're going to demonstrate it also with transition from target to target. That principle is applicable when you're arriving to the position as well. So 
what's the idea? Imagine that uh, somebody gives you a keys from a brand new Mustang that is parked in an alley in the city and he simply said to you, test it. So what you jump in the car, it's a nice poor car, so pedal to the metal. At the end of that alley, that's a traffic light, but you hold that throttle all the way and at the very end when you want to stop, you hit the brakes hard, right? It's an emergency stop. What will happen at that point? The car, there will be a lot of uh, shaking, right? Because of that emergency stop, right? It's the same with the gun. If you throw the gun, if you keep pushing that speed all the way to the end, at the end, you need to create a counter force to stop the gun. So let's do it one time. Just without the shot, I want you to throw the gun as fast as you can and hit that hard stop at the very end. Watch carefully and closely what the muzzle of the gun will do. And go. You see how the, the muzzle wobbles? Now in a real situation, you have two options. To break the shot and to pray that it will hit the desired target. Or you need to wait until that wobble stop and then break the shot. Both options are not efficient enough. Now, what if instead we're in the same car, the same nice new Mustang, and you push the pedal to the metal, but instead of hold it there to the very end, somewhere in the middle of that lane, actually you release the pedal, and instead of hitting the brake, you let the momentum to die by itself and the car to stop without even touching the brakes. We'll do exactly the same when you're drawing the gun. So you push the first half or the first 70, 80% of the draw, but the very end, don't hit the brakes, just stop pushing and let the momentum to die by itself. All right? let's give it a try. Ready, go. Now pay attention about the muzzle. Let's do it one more time. And this time you can release actually the shot. Now you can involve here the principle of consolidated action. And I want you to arrive and meanwhile to prep the trigger. So the moment that you see a stable sight alignment over the target, you can break that shot, right? Pay attention how steady the gun will arrive. Ready, go. Beautiful. So there is no wobble, no, no hesitation at the very end. You can break that shot as soon as you see acceptable side picture there. You don't need to fight with breaking the gun over there. You simply will stop pushing and let the momentum to die by itself. We do that subconsciously, very naturally. When you point to something, you do exactly the same thing. You're not going to punch the finger there. You point, you stop pushing, and the finger will stop there, will freeze there. Make sense? All right, give it a try, guys. Tell me how you feel like. Let's take one more example about the application of our principle of management of momentum. We'll take a target-to-target -target transition. What we want to do is to leave the first target as soon as you call a good shot, and you push really hard, but again, instead of arrive on, uh, while we are arriving on the next target to hit the hard break, we will stop pushing somewhere between the two targets. At that point, the gun will freeze and we will arrive really ready to shoot on the secondary target instead of over swing and return back. Does that make sense? Yeah. So first, let's do it live fire. Okay. I want to push all the way to the next target and hit the hard break there and we'll listen to shots. Okay. We'll see if there will be any difference there. So you want me for this one, I'm going to stop hard. hard yeah, break. so full full throttle there. Okay. And hit the brake, the emergency brake at the end. Okay. Ready and go. All right. Now let's uh, use the principle of management of the momentum. And I want you to press really hard somewhere between the targets and then just stop pushing till the gun arrives and the momentum simply will die. Ready and go. So there's a significant difference in the, the speed of engagement. 
Which one you like more? The uh, second one definitely felt more efficient. And uh, the first one actually, I overpassed the target and had to make a micro adjustment. So the second one landed directly in the center. My sights are directly in the center of the steel plate. Is that feels even more effortless? Yeah. You spend less energy mm -hmm. because you don't need that counter force to generate that counter force to stop your body at exactly. the very end. You just let the momentum to die by itself. That's a principle of management momentum. Actually, we have one more example here, and that will be magazine change, a quick magazine change. So most of the time, when you push all the way, when you're inserting the fresh magazine in, you kind of miss the magazine well. Instead of that, try to reach the magazine really fast, and for once you have a good grip on the magazine, just stop pushing and let, just place the magazine into the magazine well. That will guarantee you way more precise magazine change, way more smooth and efficient manipulation. So one more time, you break the shot, speed it up, place, speed it up, I will speed, I will actually grab the magazine really fast, but at the moment that I establish a good grip, I will simply will place it on the magazine well and break the second shot. You achieve the consistency in the performance, also it will be efficient enough. Now it's time for principle number four sufficient effort. A demonstration that we'll do is draw and how we actually reach the gun, how much effort you need to reach the gun in order to avoid misgripping the gun. And that's a very common issue with a lot of shooters when they push for really fast draw. Most of the time they miss uh, misgripping the gun or they miss completely their grip and then their performance of course will degrade there. Now how much effort you need when you're reaching the gun in order to form the, the good grip at the same time to be really, really fast. Now, Maus, you have an uh, empty pocket there. While you're chatting here, without thinking about it, just put your hand in a pocket. How much effort do you use to put your hand in a pocket? Not much at all. Right, now I want you to keep that image, remember how it feels like, and let's implement that in your draw stroke. So that's exactly the same amount of effort that you need when you're reaching the gun and when you're establishing the first grip when the gun is in the holster. Now face the target. Let's do it several times. You can load a gun. We'll do it live fire. Let's do it slowly first. I want to use the same amount of effort. Visualize that you want to put your hand in a pocket. Keep your fingers down, elbow up. Just put your hand in your pocket. Ready? And go. Awesome. Good. Reholster. Now, let's bring the speed up. Now, speed and effort, they're two different things. You can keep that uh, level of effort exactly the same. Now, you can simply move your hands a little bit faster. Let's give it a try. Just put your hand in your pocket. Ready? Go. All right. Now, let's... Uh, go full speed here. Again, just simply move your hands faster, keep the same level of effort, try to avoid any stiffness and over tension. Are you ready? Stand by, up. Beautiful. And reholster. Now, keeping the effort just enough will help us to eliminate any kind of over trying and over tension. Why? Tension is the biggest enemy of precision in any action. Now give it a try and tell us if that's make you draw more efficient. All right, principle of elimination of hesitation. When you decide to perform an action, there is no time to think about it. Simply focus to execute, execute without hesitation. Observe what it's necessary to make it happen correctly. What is the minimal requirements? At the moment that you have these requirements present, you execute without hesitation. So we'll have a live fire actual demonstration here and we will apply the principle of elimination of hesitation. 
Mousy, I want you to run into, run into a position. Meanwhile, you apply all the rest of the principles, you present the gun, you prep the trigger, and what I want you to narrow your focus right now and to keep your attention and focus is to see what you need to see, just a proper sight picture to make an accurate shot. At the moment that you see that proper sight picture, it's not necessary to be absolutely static. The trigger is already prepared. You deliver that shot without hesitation, right? Principle of elimination of hesitation. At the moment that you have the minimal set requirements ready to execute, simply execute. All right, let's give it a try. All right, ready and go. Trigger press, beautiful. And as you can see, let's do it one more time. As you can see, he's still actually entering the position and it's not necessary to be absolutely static and stationary. At the moment that you see acceptable side picture, trigger is prepared, you've already did your homework. That will give you extra confidence. Execute without hesitation. Let's do it one more time. And go. Awesome. Now again, this principle can be applied in many other actions and manipulations. Again, at the moment that you meet the minimal requirements and you're sure that everything is okay and present, execute without hesitation. Those were the five principles of kinesthetic efficiency. One more time. One, consolidated action. Two, economy of motion. Three, management of momentum. Four, sufficient effort. And number five, elimination of hesitation. Use these five principles like a simple five check boxes in order to evaluate your weapon manipulations in order to achieve a peak performance. I really like that, Rawson, the, the checklist. And uh, for viewers here, as uh, Rawson was saying about peak performance, this is all about squeezing the most out of your efficiency so that you can be as fast and accurate as possible. Really like it, so give it a try as well. See if it, let us know how it works out. And as always, if you like this type of content, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.